Morning everybody, I'm on the way back to the train station looking forward to the off. Very late start because the train is either early or late and I didn't fancy doing early without breakfast. I could have done because I could basically have done an hour, got back to town here and then had my breakfast but I really don't like starting on an empty stomach especially without my coffee. My little stop in the middle of nowhere. There was a few people waiting for it yesterday. Only myself and one other guy got off here today. So clearly this is more of a transit station. People live here and get the hell out. Going to work. So there it is one last time. Fortunately, this time it's down the hill and around the bend back onto the Camino. And just like that, I'm back on the Camino. This is where I came out yesterday. I went that way and the Camino goes this way. We're off. Always seems weird that if you've done a kilometer or two before you even start the day, but hey, it is what it is, right? It's windy again. All right. It's breezy again. A tad on the cool side, but I'm trying without my jacket for the moment. Just with my fleece vest. Just seen my first arrow of the day, and here's my second. That's nice. Just 50 meters further than the first. The first was exactly where I needed it, on a turn off. So it's always nice to know you are definitely going the right way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to whoever did the marking. Oh yes, I was just thinking this should be my turn off and right here exactly where it should be I see a shell. The marking does not get better than that. And look at that. The tarsil comes to an end. <sighs> I know, I know, you're probably sick of it by now. And yes, it's not exactly dirt, but I'll settle for gravel underfoot. And I'm in the countryside, out of town, in the countryside, <laughs> there's a shell beckoning me onwards. I got water, I got food. What more do you need? As you can see, this is a long, steady, gentle incline. So I have to say, I quite welcomed that seat when I found it. Nice to see the shell just there as well. Going, yep, still on track. back to Rheinbach only about a k away from my accommodation in front of me we have the family church all right I'm joking but it's the church of Peter and Paul and as you know I'm Peter and my cousin is Paul one guess what was behind that in actual fact, there's another story behind that, but yeah, that is family. I mentioned before, this is pretty well marked. Just behind me, there's a shell. Just here, there's a shell. And here, on the corner of the bridge, there's a shell. <laughs> and that looks like a brand new one too. Somebody wanted to make darn sure that us poor pilgrims did not go the wrong way. And yes, there's another one coming off the bottom of the bridge. I love you guys. You're making today so easy. Oh, there's another one right in front of me. <laughs> As if there was any other choice. I just turned the corner. Uh, <laughs> Remember how I said I was loving the fact there were some hills? Hmm. 
I followed the road around here. I should have just come through the park. It was my first instinct, but the signs said not. Maybe because it's closed after hours. If you look across the road here, that gives you an idea as to how steep this is. I like these old brick houses. Pretty neat. Generally in very good condition. Nice. I was wondering why I kept seeing tankers behind trucks, behind tractors and all sorts going along the main highway here. It's not that common in New Zealand, but you know, they transport their um, waste from the farms and put them spread it over the fields logically. And I've just found out why this whole place here is for biogas. Smell is typical of a farm, slightly more concentrated, so nice as it is to have the sitting place here i don't really think i want it i've actually detoured slightly off the camino to see this because i was curious but it restarts just up at the wood line over there so i'm not far away that there folks is real dirt not all gravel This part appears to be newly marked because that, I, I don't know if these are for the Camino or not, but if they are, wow. But the shell just back before and this one coming up here on the tree look absolutely brand new. Oh, that sucker is shiny. Could have been from last year but wow I have the distinct impression this is all new because look at all these arrows just everywhere there's another shell on the tree there Can't be more than a year old, surely. Oh, this is nice. My first pine plantation for a few days, so I guess I can't really complain, can I? That's good underfoot too, of course. This is just a tad more uneven than usual for a Jakobsweg or Camino. more the type of trail I'm used to from New Zealand. It's kind of cool. I like this. Ah, say that and then I see a road. Bother. Uh, holy heck. That's my trail. Okay, this is going to be fun. Not as bad as it looked. Wouldn't want it to be wet though. My little friend. Uh, actually, I just said my little friend. I should have looked to see where it was going, shouldn't I? I'm not going on the road. I'm going down here. No sooner did I say that I could do with somewhere for a break and look what's come up. That's not even a minute later. Very brief piece on the road and then back onto this again. To be fair, the piece on the road could have been avoided. Um, it could have actually cut straight across the corner and not done it, but I'm not sure if it's private or not. So maybe that's why they did it. Might've been too hard. The owners might not have agreed. 
Uh, it would have been nice because there was no real shoulder but then again to be fair there was practically no traffic so not really a major well that startled me this is one of the occasions where I question things slightly this trail is flat very good condition and goes roughly the right way it could easily join back up to the Jakobsvik However, the Jakobsvik is going up here on Tarsil and it's going to meander to and fro like this, literally kind of zigzagging for the next several kilometres. I know it goes up here because I've double checked. Firstly, through the branches, you won't be able to see it later in the year, there's a mussel shell. Secondly, I check Mappy, and they both agree. Going up. So this is the first place today, the first turn off, where there's nothing to see. No markings of any kind. I've checked Mappy, and it's this way. Now, when you look right here, in a very logical place for markings, this tree's come down. And underneath, well, on the trunk here, you can see a blaze for one of the other trails. I strongly suspect that the arrow would have been in the piece that's come off. There's a faded yellow arrow here. I guess in doubt I would have gone this way anyway. But I'm glad I'm not going further up that hill because it leads well away from where I need to be. See that sign? Back there, some neat people. Wonderful to see. First Herberger that I've actually seen on this route. I know that a couple of others exist, but to actually be there and see it was great. I stopped and had a quick word with the owner and um, yeah, very nice chap. Um, he's apparently got somebody coming to stay tonight. Uh, and she's coming from the opposite direction. So there's hope for me yet. I might yet find another pilgrim on the way. I forgot to ask him why he'd done it. If he or his wife had actually walked the Camino, which was a bit short-sighted of me. But I was so carried away by the fact that I actually found a place for pilgrims to stay. Kind of like a little albergue. <sighs> that was a nice feeling. As you all know by now, I'm a sucker for a body of water. The frogs obviously love this place too, judging by the number of them squashed on the road, unfortunately. And somebody enough was kind enough to build picnic tables notched for the poles. <laughs> I don't know if that's really why they're notched, but there yeah, they are. Not the best filled roll I've ever had, but then I paid less than two euros, so what do you expect? Ah, the drizzle, rain, call it what you will, isn't letting up. Hands are a bit cold. I left my gloves back home when I made the break because I haven't needed them. And now, of course, with the wind and the rain, it's a tiny bit chilly. Nothing too dramatic. I do have a spare pair of socks, so I can always put those on if needs be, but eh, I'll keep them dry and warm. Well, as you can see, I'm at Herlostrum. The next train is in 30 minutes. Well, the next train for me is in 30 minutes. It's good to see that this place is actually being utilized properly. Clearly it's been used as accommodation. Wouldn't be my favorite, but hey, better than it not being used at all, right? This little train thing of theirs reminds me of a bus on tra railway tracks with a diesel engine.
it appears this is one of those towns where fast is best I look for restaurants in Google Google Maps I must admit normally fast food and restaurants come separate and occasionally there's overlap now okay yes this place is sitting area it's, it's actually looks like decent seating but it's an imbus the food includes currywurst and soup it's quick service stuff and then you come around the corner and you've got king kebab and pizza house which again has a sitting area but again it's fast food come down the road a little bit further there's another kebab house that one i think is just takeaway oh no there's a well obviously the table outside there's one in there's a schnell imbus here which has closed the asia schnell imbus is no longer open clearly because there's simply too much competition across the road from it another donut place hey look i've got nothing against donut yeah, they aside from the meat that they put on it, it's halfway healthy. And I'm just talking about the instant press stuff. There is occasionally some good stuff in them. In terms of bakeries, there's one just around the corner from me. Unfortunately, they've only got those simple basic machines where you press a button and it spurts out stuff that's, well, it's drinkable, but that's about it. This place here ended up being my go-to for breakfast. Again, it's just got the push-button coffee machine. But you get what you pay for here. It's hot, it's cheap. You're not paying three euros for a push-button coffee. You're paying, I think it was 120, something along those lines. The buns and everything were there. Um, yeah, I mean, the service was good. The, the people were friendly. What more can you really ask for? I think I paid four euro for breakfast no not even this brasserie here was recommended to me for breakfast well I came in here for an afternoon coffee push button coffee bloody awful well all right maybe not bloody awful but not very good and everything was overpriced I paid over seven euros for a very basic coffee and a great looking but very basic cake Yet another little imbus, call it what you will. Got nothing against it. They are what they are, but it's not a restaurant. So another kebab pizza house. So just here we've got another imbus pizza place. And then we've got the creperie. Ice Cafe La Vie. Apparently they've got an actual, yes, they've got a proper coffee machine. But they're only open afternoons and evening Connie's bars there not really my style unfortunately looks good though